Here is the host of Sustainable Today. Hello, I'm Sarah Bagby. Welcome to Sustainable Today. Now today we're going to be focusing on the Native Americans and how they survived for hundreds and thousands of years off of the land. We even have a house behind me, a plank house made of cedar, just like the ones that they lived in. The event we are attending is called Bird Fest. It's held here on the beautiful Ridgefield Wildlife Refuge in Washington State where the Cathlopotal Plank House is located. This area and its exhibits and features are open to the public for most of the year, but it closes in fall for the winter season. Birdfest is a closing ceremony of sorts where people are invited to come and share in an intense and personal encounter with the indigenous knowledge of the Chinook tribe. And we're going to take a look inside and see all the different tools and artifacts and how they lived inside one of those houses. You know, we had 900 people living in a settlement of 14 houses just like the one behind me. We also have a traditional salmon bake that we're going to be watching and maybe even taste a little. Um, we'll also take a little nature walk around here, see all of the different plants and wildlife and how they lived off of it back then and how we could now today. Come on in and let's take a look inside the Cathopolo house. There's a special way to walk in. Traditionally, when you enter a Chinook house for the first time, you go in backwards. Um, so until the people inside the house recognize you and know who you are and why you're there, uh, you come in backwards to show that you mean no harm. Cathopotal was occupied from 1450 to about 1830-ish. Cathopotal was probably one of the largest um, villages along the Columbia. Okay. The Chinook. Um, basically settled from Celilo Falls up by the Dalles all the way down both sides of the river to the mouth and then up north and south of the mouth a little ways and so at least one explorer gave an account of coming down the river he would see just as he started to lose sight of the smoke from the last village mm -hmm. he would see the smoke of the next one so there were there was village after village after village all the way down both sides of the Columbia they shared a culture they shared a tradition they'd been on this land at least documented on the wildlife refuge uh, the earliest site here is dated to 2500 BC so they had been on this place in this site for a very long time probably with living in the same sort of cultural setup that they had done for centuries. As far as I know, this is the largest settled population that lived only by hunting and gathering. They didn't do agriculture, they didn't raise animals. So most of the time when you get big settled populations, it's because they're growing their own food or they're raising cattle in order to be able to support a large population in one place. The Chinook never did that. So they, because there's so much abundance, there's so much stuff on this land that they can live on, um, they were able to gather everything that they needed in excess because they also traded. Um, they never grew their own food. They did manage the land, so they would burn the grasslands in order to increase the camas and to encourage elk to come down here um, because elk like to forage in big grassy areas. Uh, what the archaeologists have told us from the evidence that they found at the site is that the elk that were here were about 30% bigger than the elk we see today. I can tell you that at Cathlopotal, they specialized in processing elk hide. And they produced a product called the Clamon that's like an elk hide armor. They fixed it so that the elk hide was about a half of an inch thick. And it was a garment that basically left your right arm free so that you could wield your weapon. Um, so you hooked it here, and, and then it was basically like a long, straight garment that opened on the right-hand side. It was a huge, huge export item here. But there was a trade route that went from Boston where they brought trade goods to come here. They traded for a variety of things, but specialized in trading for these, then took the Clamon armor up to British Columbia where they traded these for sea otter pelts, and then they went to China and sold them. And hides weren't worn a lot as outer clothing here because of the rain. When hides get wet, it takes a really long time for them to dry. Mm -hmm, and heavy. Well, then what would they be using for rain? Um, cedar. They just wear cedar clothes. Because cedar is partially water repellent. These folks used cedar for practically everything. They used the cedar, different parts of the cedar for different things. So this part of the cedar bark is what's used to make that. And this, so this is also made out of cedar bark. Inside the bark, there's another layer, so you can peel off the inside and you get this. You can split it into long strips and then you can use that for weaving. So this is how this hat was made. 
You put one of these hats on, so the water's coming off and down. Then you've got a cape that ties around here, so the water that hits your shoulders runs down off the bottom. Um, you're pretty reasonably water repellent, so you can do everything with this stuff. And you just don't go out and pull a piece of bark off a cedar tree, you know. You go out there and you, you make that connection with that cedar tree and you ask for permission to pull bark from that cedar tree, maybe offer a song and peel, peel that one piece of bark, you know, one piece of bark off that tree. And then when you're done, you know, you may want to gift it some tobacco and maybe some more songs, but it's all about respecting that tree. You know, I've been in the forest and I've seen trees this big with a scar on one side of them, knowing that our ancestors had pulled bark off there, maybe to make a hat or maybe to make a cape or, or, or skirt or something. So it's evidence that the respect was there and that tree continues to live. Outside the plank house, several craftsmen demonstrate the skills of the Chinook tribe, who used to fashion tools from their natural surroundings. Many of these skills are still practiced today. Oh, because it's a, I see, it's a badge. Do you see that too? I didn't know that either.